Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Dominic, you've got a very different vantage point on this whole Section 508 refresh from the perspective that um, you're looking at uh, the policy implementation as well as the assistance, but from a programmatic point of view as well as I think one of the things that you really believe in is innovation. It's in your DNA and in the program that you have developed at GSA. Um, what, how does accessibility um, really uh, spark innovation in your mind, if it does? And can you give me, give me some examples? Be specific about that, if you could. <coughs> okay, well, so I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, but just a little bit of background. So, uh, Preeti, you, you um, referred to kind of my, my vantage point. So I just want to <laughs> clearly put out there I'm probably the least qualified up here on the panel today. Uh, I'm not a, an accessibility uh, technical expert by any means. Uh, but I do think, and this is part of the reason why accessibility is so important, that a diversity, the diversity of points of view and experience are important in making something successful. So that's why accessibility is important to the government, that we need to pull in as many divergent viewpoints, people from different vantage points, experiences, lifestyles, uh, to spark innovation, to make sure that the interests of all the American people are represented and that we can tap into the collective talent of this country because our we should not limit um, what we can access um, through just regular means. We need to make sure we're reaching a handout to every American citizen. So I just want to put that out there from the start. Um, that said, uh, I think, so we can look at innovation from two perspectives. One is that, uh, yes, maybe accessibility is helping to spark innovation, but our innovation is also helping to spark accessibility. And when I look at uh, some of the, the um, new tools out there um, that have made us more accessible, so, and, and I'm, I'm going on the secondhand knowledge here because, I'm, again, I'm not uh, steeped in the field, but like, the iPhone has been um, designed in a way from, from, the, from the core that makes it more accessible than previous um, phones be from a usability perspective. Um, things like Amazon Echo, which allow us to interact verbally in plain language. So uh, with, with computers, with the internet, <coughs> this has made literally technologies and information more accessible to more people. So I, I think that's a, a beautiful thing. And I, and I think the technology will continue to drive accessibility probably more than the other way around. Um, from, uh, from our program's perspective, uh, I think that the, I just want to put out there, uh, so I came in, a few years back, Helen was carrying the, the full weight of the program. Terry had been, <laughs> been gone for a little bit. I'm not sure how long. Helen, would you take a bow? We've yeah. been talking <laughs> about you. Stand up and take a Stand bow, up, Helen. please. <laughs> yeah, Helen, so the diva of 508. Today's <laughs> got to be at least in part a celebration of all that, that Helen has uh, contributed to the to community. Um, so I saw a few things. I w uh, and, and again, I was coming in cold. I did not have a background in accessibility. So this is a program that I adopted and got to try to know and understand. And uh, a few things, uh, and I, th I think Deborah um, kind of brought some of these points to light, that accessibility is viewed as you know, the ceiling rather than the floor. Uh, let's just get there. It's a bolt-on thing that we don't um, it's certainly, if it's considered from the start, it, it's not manifesting itself kind of more broadly than it should within the government. And so I saw this more as a, it's, a, it's an executive issue, it's a leadership issue. These things would get done if leadership demanded it. Um, <clears throat> you know, but historically, we've talked amongst ourselves and we were very good and we understand accessibility. But a big part of, a big push that I've tried to bring within our office is how do we communicate the importance of accessibility to uh, kind of to, to our leadership? And I think this is the beauty of the, the standards um, refresh is it provides us with opportunity. Change always provides opportunity. So we've taken advantage of this, I think, and have put together some communications on how to really, in a simple way, convey the importance of accessibility. So I view that as a big part of the push of where our program is has been heading. Um, and the second thing is uh, the ability to measure the impact of our programs. Um, 
we uh, we've been focused on many different things. Uh, Helen personally has been very vested in training, going out there, training the trainers, training the uh, the um, 508 uh, um, community. Um, we've been invested in providing tools just to make it easier to make the accessibility language available in um, contracts, for example. Uh, tools online um, resources we put on section 508.gov uh, but we really until this point haven't had a, ch a way to see that impact to measure the impact of these things so we have been very kind of vigilant at least in the past year and, and moving forward and everything we do making sure that we can count we can count the things that have touched count the things we're trying to impact the contracts is a great example I don't think we had any idea or we had some guesses of you know how many contracts being put out there have the proper accessibility language baked in. It's a law, you'd think everyone would do it, but people don't do what's not being watched and, and policy implementation is an art form, it's not a science. So when you measure something, when you bring attention to it, it changes and that's what we really tried to bring to the program and with great help from Helen and John and kind of charting a new course, taking along the great things we've already built, the great community that's out there, which is probably the most passionate of all the policy communities under my purview, <laughs> and you know, adding that extra kind of analytics and leadership uh, focus to it. 